Hello! I am Digital Illustrator Mike Meth, and it is my profound pleasure to bring you this video tutorial on behalf of Wacom. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to be discussing how to use color and value in order to bring your illustrations to life. Now, prior to this recording, I was talking to one of the guys from Wacom about what to do for the tutorial, and he recommended recording a video of me realistically rendering an apple. So here is a hyperspeed recording of me painting a beer. So, the reason I decided to go with this particular painting is because it's a great example of how getting color and light right can really give an illustration a profound sense of realism. Uh, now, this is by no means a perfect painting, but the fundamentals are all there. There is, there's so much depth of color and value here that I could really give an in-depth lecture on everything that goes into a painting like this. Uh, but I'm going to I'm going to stick to some of the basics for the purpose of this video. Uh, so the first thing I want to demonstrate here. So here's our finished painting. It's it's pretty loose, but uh, it'll do for now. So I want to talk about the importance of value, and when I say value, I mean lights and darks and midtones uh, without any color information. Uh, and the reason why value is so important so much more important than color really is that in the absence of value this is what you get this is with the colors intact but there's no there's no value so you can't really tell what this is uh, there's no shape there's no structure to it uh, so when I'm teaching I like to impress just how important it is to to get a certain level of mastery of grayscale of your lights and darks before you even consider moving on to color um, when you compare these two, here's just color with no value, here's value with no color, um, but the value with no color still has a strong sense of realism. You can still very much tell that this is a beer. Uh, you can see the, the depth of lights and darks, and uh, you have the structure intact. Without value, you know, it's light and shadow that gives objects their form. Without light and shadow, there's you can't see anything. There, there's no shaper uh, to anything. So here is our grayscale image. And uh, then the next step, and it's important to note, um, I don't know if you could tell because the, the video was so fast, uh, I did not just create this grayscale image and then just do a color overlay over that. Um, but you know, I can talk about my workflow for that another time. Um, so this is just this finished illustration without the color information. Um, so once you really get uh, a solid foundation and grayscale, then and only then, really, is it appropriate to move on to the color stage. Um, so now that we've moved on to this color stage here, it, it really, when compared to the grayscale, it has a lot more soul, uh, it has a lot more depth to it, a lot more mood to it, um, that you, you just, you don't get with the grayscale. Um, but there, there's a lot of technique, there's a lot of stuff that actually goes into getting these types of highlights and, you know, the depth with the color, where it's more than just a colorized grayscale image. Uh, so what I want to do now is I want to give just a really brief overview of what's called color temperature. So what do I mean by color temperature? Um, so when we look at these highlights here, I'm going to do a quick demonstration of what I see often uh, in art, what I see often with my students, and something that I did for a long time, because what I did for a long time when I was starting off was create just a grayscale image and then colorize it without uh, any additional steps to go in and add opaque colors. Um, so something that I see a lot when people are doing highlights or shadows uh, when I, you know, you're going to take this red and you're going to add highlights to it. A lot of people just add white. They add a lighter version of that same red. And what you get is this kind of washed out chalky look to it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and when they add shadows, they really just add black or a darker value of that same red. And again, it's just kind of muddy. Um, so what I mean by color temperature, I'm going to take that red one more time, and instead of just going lighter with the same value, we're actually 
also changing the hue, changing the actual color. So to get like one of these hot highlights like this, I'm going to start adding orange. And then when it, you get to the really the, the hottest part of the highlights, you see I'm not actually changing the, uh, the value so much. I'm just changing the hue. Um, but as you can see, the contrast from you know red to orange to yellows really gives you a lot of vibrance uh, and it makes it appear much more hot like much hotter of a highlight and the the opposite is true you know if you're going to use a blue and you want to get like a really icy highlight center you would do the same thing but instead of going to yellows you'll go closer and closer to cyan or green Um, and then if you want to get like to a really hot point, then you can start moving up to white by, uh, by lightening the value. And then that gets to like an almost, almost unbearably bright spot. Uh, now the, the opposite also holds true. Um, so for example, now we're talking about shadows and applying color temperature to shadows. So let's say we're going to take that red again. Instead of just adding black to it, maybe we'll actually go closer to blue. Ooh, that's muddy. Nobody saw that. So traditionally, you know, it, it makes sense to start adding blue to most of your shadows. Um, let's see if that makes sense. And, that, you know, as you can see there, I'm not really changing the value so much as I'm just changing the hue. But as you can see, it starts to cool off. Um, so now let's give you some practical application beyond these little demonstrations. So here we have one of my portraits um, because I'm predominantly a portrait artist. And first, I'll give you the same example I showed with the beer, uh, what it looks like without any value. So here is that painting without any value. This is just the color. And clearly this does not work. Um, so here is the grayscale image with the absence of any color. And it's still, again, it has that depth, it has that realism, but it's missing the, the mood and the soul that the finished piece has. And as you can see, adding that color really brings the thing to life. And I wanna talk about uh, some practical application of not only color temperature, but making sure you have color in uh, all of your highlights and all your shadows and really just having a wide array of colors in your piece. So a lot of people when they do eyes, for example, they go to pure white. And as you can see here, that is not the case. I don't think there's any pure white in this piece at all. And, and that's another thing. A lot of people have a tendency to put a lot of pure blacks and a lot of pure whites in, and you really don't have those in the natural world. The only time you have pure black is in the absence of any light, like inside of, <clears throat> excuse me, inside of a closet. And the only time that you'll have any pure white is, you know, maybe if you're looking directly into the sun or you're looking at an incredibly bright specular highlight, uh, like on a piece of metal or something, uh, everything else is going to have some color in it. And as you can see, practical application of the color temperature I was talking about is you get into shadows and also reflected light. You can see some reflected light from the, the blue atmosphere on the sides of her cheeks and whatnot, and the cast shadows under her nose, that's also got some blue in it. Um, what I wanted to, what did I want to talk about next? Uh, you know, as you go to the highlights over here, you can see it goes kind of from a brownish yellow to a brighter spot. There's no white. Um, but yeah, that, that genuinely, it gives you a sense of how to add color and, and uh, color to your highlights and shadows. And another thing before I, I wrap up here is making sure you have uh, like a uniform ambient color that 
ties your whole piece together. So instead of just saying, okay, well, this part is going to be kind of pinkish, this part's going to be kind of goldish, brownish, this is green, because this is kind of a winter scene, or just really in any any situation, you want one color that kind of acts as the the base which ties everything together. And there's blue for this one. It's it's a base of blue. So when I went from the original you know value block in ah, to the colors, the first thing I did was add kind of a base of blue. And that's that's a traditional painting technique. And what that does is gives you some type of a a baseline to add all your colors on. You're not going to have any just pure grays or whites. Um, so it gives it automatically a greater sense of realism. Um, you can see the eyes as I was talking about. There's no white. It's not grayscale. It's actually a tannish and pinkish. And it's it's. I can't impress. You know, I can't state how important it is to have color in all of those areas. You know, you might think that this glass is just going to be gray, but as you can see, there's some the blue in there. As you get to the hot parts, there's a little bit of yellow. Uh, the head of the beer, it's got some tan in it. This part of the glass, it's, it's some greens. So you really want to start looking to train your eye to see colors that you wouldn't necessarily think are there. Uh, and you'll notice when you really start training your eye and paying attention, just when you look outside, you'll see a lot more colors than you originally thought were there. And training your eye, because your ability to see, your ability to use your eye is so much more important than your technical ability. Um, I don't think people impress that enough. So really just keep looking, keep training your eye to see colors, to see values as they actually are in the natural world. And that'll really help to bring your pieces to life. Alrighty, uh, so I want to wrap this thing up, but before I do, I want to leave you with some parting gifts. Uh, so first things first, I want to direct you to this resource. It's a book called Color and Light, A Guide for the Realist Painter by James Gurney. Uh, James Gurney is the author and illustrator behind the Dinotopia series, uh, and he has written this book, Color and Light, as well as a bunch of other really useful books. It's, this is basically my Bible for all things color and light and realism. Uh, so I definitely recommend you check it out. Uh, and now me, my stuff. So this is MikeMeth.net, not to be confused with MikeMeth.com. Some other guy named MikeMeth has that. <laughs> uh, so this is my official portfolio website. It's got all my illustrations and such, uh, social links, whatever else you could possibly want. And uh, last but not least, MikeMeth Education. Uh, at MikeMethEducation.com. This is my online uh, digital painting education website where I offer classes and all this type of stuff, just more in depth. Uh, so definitely check that out. I just opened up registration for the fall term. So uh, I would love to see you. And uh, that's all I got for you. So thank you guys so much for, for tuning in and uh, I hope to see you again. Take care.